This is an all access zone. Still there in the middle. Order. Still there. We're going to hear from their spotters, from the crew chief. Clear, clear, clear. All the communication that the drivers hear, you're going to have the opportunity to hear that throughout the day. Bring it home, Chance. We did it, guys. Yeah, you guys are awesome. Great perspective on the championship four with Hot Pass on NBC Sports app. You can get play-by-play -play coverage, dedicated feed, multiple camera angles. All focusing on those championship four drivers. That coverage tomorrow starts at 2.30 p.m. Eastern. You can find out more at NBCSports.com slash live. Today on CNBC, Xfinity Series qualifying at 11. NASCAR America, final practice for the Spring Cup Series and another version of NASCAR America all on NBCSN. And then countdown to green at 3 o'clock for the Xfinity Series. The champion will be crowned this afternoon. Who will it be of the championship four? And then shotgun with Rutledge Wood at 7 o'clock. Mike. And there will be a crown, a champion crown tomorrow afternoon as well in the Sprint Cup Series, Rick. And there's been a lot of attention paid to the 48 team. That's because they could be on the verge of recording a historic seventh victory. With that in mind, you've got to remember there are three members of this team who are there at the very beginning. Of course, that's driver Jimmy Johnson, crew chief Chad Knauss, but not to be forgotten is the car chief. That would be Ron Malik. Ron Malik has been here since the very beginning, has won all six championships with his team. But perhaps an even bigger and deeper bond with Jimmy Johnson. Malik goes before the Spring Cup Series. Malik and his relationship with Johnson goes all the way back to the ASA days, before Jimmy Johnson was even known in the NASCAR world. They have a bond that is very deep. And believe me, just as much as Chad and Jimmy would cherish that seventh victory, Bob would embrace it just as well. And Steve, you know as well as anybody, he's been a big a part of this team as there has ever been in the history of this series. Yeah, I mean, I think Ron plays that, that you know, glue that people don't see at times. We've all heard the stories about the Milk and Cookies meeting where, where Rick Hendrick had to sit Jack and out and Jimmy Johnson down and, and I, why weren't you all getting along? Let's try to figure this out. And they went on this historic run of championships. But through all of that, through the good days, the bad, the fast times, the slow times, Ron has been doing the heavy lifting in the garage, getting the cars prepared, trying to keep Chad happy, which is a very formidable task, trying to keep Jimmy happy as a superstar driver. And he uh, he's one of the most intense people in the garage area. And, and really, he deserves the recognition because, as Mike said, not many people know who he is, but he, he single-handedly has had a huge part in all of these championships. Explain the car chief. I mean, you've got a crew chief who more or less makes the, the 20,000 feet looking down on it calls. What's the car chief do? So, I mean, so basically over time, the car, you know, the crew chief used to be in the days of Dale Inman out there working on the car. Well, those days are over. Now, the crew chief studies film, he reads reports, he hires the team, he manages the team, he's the leader. And really, the car chief is responsible for everything that has to do with that 48 car, to everything. When it's being prepared at the shop, when it goes to the setup process, when the engine is installed, when it comes to the racetrack, goes through inspection. When Chad Knauss comes out on a Sunday morning with the folded up piece of paper and said, here's the setup. This is what we're going to run Sunday afternoon to try to win our seventh championship. Ron Mallett's job is to make sure that car is set up exactly as Chad has, has been, you know, asked for it to be. So the 48 on its way out to the track and teammate Chase Elliott already on the track. It, although a lot of the focus is going to be on the championship four because it's deserved as they're running for a title. We cannot look away from what Chase Elliott has been able to do all weekend. He has been impressive since they unloaded on Friday and continues to impress. Chase Elliott right now, second as far as a lap on the speed chart, still looking for that first win. Well, we talked about running right the top. No, Chase Elliott's down the top. I mean, this is this is what you're going to see. Uh, inches away from the wall, that right there is running to the top. And it's a huge difference in speed between running, to, like we talked about earlier, two feet from the wall versus being right against it. Chase Elliott enters the corner right against the wall, never leaves it all the way through the center of the corner. Of course, the danger in that is making a small mistake and getting into the wall, but, you know, racing's about getting all you can. If you're going to get all you can, this is where you're going to have to be. And I've, I've never driven a car to this level, but I've raced enough stuff to realize that at my talent level, there was a few feet window on every corner entry that I couldn't hit. That's why I never made it to this. But Jeff, it, it's, it's beyond me how close he is right there. I mean, what is his window of opportunity over driving it or getting into the wall? I mean, how easy is it? 
Well, it, it's very easy, and it, it typically starts in corner entering. You try to carry a little bit too much speed in the corner entering, then when you enter as high as he was entering, there's no room for error. You have to be exactly, you have to be precise. And you see, now he's moved down the racetrack, trying to see what his car drives like on the bottom, and it didn't look very good. It looked like it was sideways on the bottom of the racetrack, and that's one thing you'll see at this racetrack. Your car will drive one way at the top in a completely different way at the bottom. Chase Elliott working right now on getting to the road. I think everybody's expecting some green flag pit stop small. Look, at he did scrub the wall there. There's a little bit of paint that scrubbed off, but look at how tight he is to the wall. That's, that's what you want. That's you're talking. We say inches. I'm not sure that's fair. I, that looks like an inch. I'll tell you, so we came down here to test years ago, and we thought it'd be a cool idea. I mean, look at this shot right here. Yeah. Are you sure he's not hitting the wall right here? Yeah. So we put a GoPro on the right rear quarter panel. thought this would look cool. And we come in, and the camera's missing. I'm like, hey, man, did you hit the wall? <laughs> nope. Nope. I'm like, okay, so let me just get this straight. That three-inch little camera was the window that we had to work within, and we, we didn't have that much room. Apparently not. And it was, can you imagine, we're talking 400 miles right. against the wall. And it's, it's, it's visual. The driver can see out of the front of his car. He can't see the right rear quarter panel. That's feel. The, the, the visual part is getting the car lined up and then keeping that right rear quarter panel setting right against the wall. That's a feel the driver has. That's way more feel than it is visual. That's perfection right there. Just scratch the details. <laughs> perfection. Look at the top speeds. Johnson, Elliott, Edwards. Fade and play in the top five.